Let's turn our attention back to the markets. As we said at the top of the show here, uh, we're seeing a big bounce back with the Dow now up nearly 500 points, the NASDAQ up uh, more than 200 here as we see investors getting back into tech. Let's bring in Brent Schutte. He's Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management Chief Investment Strategist. Uh, Brent, make sense of this big swing for me. Well, I think you're seeing the market reaction to an economy that's still very much strong. And so for the past few months, we've had these worries that have been uh, hanging over the market, creating this cross currents in a trendless environment, such as inflation. What would the Fed do? Uh, fiscal policy things of that nature uh, that cause people to worry about economic growth. What you've seen over the past few weeks is that economic growth is still strong. This morning, we saw the ISM services index at over 60, which is incredibly strong. Last week, we saw the manufacturing segment over 60, which is strong. And so eventually, um, despite all the worries, the markets are almost always pulled higher by an economy that continues to push forward. And that is what you're seeing today. I want to ask you about what's going on in the bond market today. The 10 years having a big day that yield is up about five basis points uh, to 1.53 percent. We saw it kind of uh, slog off uh, over the last few sessions going back to last week. But above one and a half percent, what's the next target and what does it say to you about the kind of stocks that are going to outperform and underperform in a rising interest rate, especially in the long end environment? Yeah, I mean, it says the same thing kind of that I just mentioned, that economic growth is still strong. And if you look at the underlying fundamentals of the U.S. economy, which no one talks about anymore, the consumer is incredibly strong. So the consumer has spent the last 12 years deleveraging their balance sheet by a large level. The income statement, interest costs are incredibly low relative to the uh, monthly disposable income. And so when you look at those and you combine those with the current economic momentum that I just mentioned, growth is going to remain strong. Now, tying that into the conversation that you just had and the question that you asked, think about technology. Think about regulation. When I came on these shows five, six, seven years ago, we were talking about bank stocks. You mentioned Philip Morris. I think of bank stocks most recently. Now it's technology stocks. The gentleman on before me talked about competition. If you think about Facebook, technology stocks in general, the past three or four years have been a perfect storm. We had slow economic growth because of the trade war and then because of COVID, and that made them the only earnings game in town. Now you have broad and strong growth. You have negative real interest rates. Um, you have uh, the economy that needs more supply, more production. And so that all ties into where we think there are opportunities, which are still in small cap stocks and value stocks. At the opening of this conversation, you were talking about energy stocks rallying. That's because we have a shortage of energy right now. And so that all kind of ties together, hopefully, and, and fits it into a nice little knot about where we think there are opportunities moving forward. And certainly the 10-year Treasury correlates to that because it is also showing that strong and broad economic growth. Yeah, Brent, talk to me a little bit more about uh, strategy here. Why U.S. small caps? Well, so small caps, like an earlier economic cycle, which I think is up for debate, are we early or are we not? Um, the reality is we still have a lot of time left in the cycle. They like easy fiscal and monetary policy. Real rates, even though the Fed is going to tighten, the 2024 dot is at 175. That is below the 2.3% or 2.1%, I should say, inflation that they expect at that time. Real rates remain negative. Valuation does matter. On a valuation perspective, small caps are as cheap relative to their large cap brethren as they have been since the 1990s, the late 1990s. And from a sentiment perspective, these shows don't often start with people talking about small caps. They start with people talking about technology stocks. And so technology is overinvested likely and small caps are underinvested. So when you put all those together, we still do like a tilt towards small caps and even value stocks, which are pretty much correlated to the same economic environment. Well, Brent, we thank you for your comments here and we want to have you back to discuss them again. Now, Brent Shute is the Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management Chief Investment Strategist. Thanks again.